Welcome to part three. So before we dive straight into start building our application, there's just a couple of bits that we just need to cover before we do that. Let's remind ourselves what the application features are, because what we also need to talk about is how do we get data actually into our application? Now, we're not going to build that straight away. We're going to build that just a little bit further down the line, but it's really, really useful that we kind of work out how do we take the inspiration design that we got? How do we know that we're going to get the data that we need and, and it's going to be available to us to display in our application. So there's the six key features on screen at, the, at this moment in time. So let's look at the data that we need to display in our application. So on the left hand side, you can see that we have the video results screen. So once a user has actually done a search, you can see that that's the data that we're going to be displaying. And on the right hand side, you can see it's the video display screen. So once you actually selected a thumbnail, we then see further detail about that video. Okay, so let's just pull all of that data together. And what do we see? We see at least 10 fields that we're gonna need in, in, in our application in order for us to build it. So where do we get that data from? Now, Flutterflow can't provide that to us. Flutterflow is gonna allow us to build our application, but Flutterflow, our Flutterflow application is gonna to need to actually pull that information from an external source. And that's where we need to use what's called an API. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. It sounds really, really grand, but quite simply, it's a way for different software programs to communicate with, with each other. So your mobile phone application is a software application. Your remote service that you would be potentially pulling data in from is a software application. It's a way for both those, those applications to talk to each other. It's a standardized way for your applications to talk to each other. So let's take a little step back then. So imagine that you are in a restaurant and you want to order some food. You don't go into the kitchen and cook the food yourself. Instead, you kind of tell the waiter what you want. You place that order and the waiter goes into the kitchen, communicates your order with the chef. And then once the food is, is being cooked, by the kitchen staff and it's made available to the waiter the waiter will then bring that food back to your table so an api acts like a waiter between software programs it takes requests from one program and then passes them on to another and then returning the results back to the requesting program this enables different programs to work together and exchange data and information and primarily in a standardized way too so then when we think of it in our own mobile phone application, the user interface would be presented to the user, the user would then interact, they would do something, the, our application would then make a call out to the outside world, it would connect to an API, the API would then spin up some background service that would then go and pull some data in from um, a database, it would kind of bring everything that we need, and then the, the database would then shape that, that data up into a way that our application would then understand, and our application would then pull that information in, and then we would then display it with inside our own user interface. So that's te technically what happens when we are using an API API with inside our own mobile application. So just to look at that then in perspective of our own application, we can see here that the user would hit the search icon, they would then perform that search, they'll key in their term. As soon as that interaction is then made, the API would be called, so we'll make that remote call, we'll pass in that search term, we would then hit the API, the database or, or whatever service that we're calling, then we'll then return that data back to our mobile application. Of course, on the right hand side here, you can see that there's a region here where we would then display that data with inside the application. So finally then, before we get into the meat of building the application, I just wanted to give you a quick sample of what the API response looks like. So on the left-hand side, again, you've got that inspiration design there, but, you, but what I've done is I've actually highlighted the block of videos. And on the right-hand side, you can see the information that is returned back from the API. Now, this is just one video, but you can see there is quite easy to understand. On In the red font color, you can see that that's what's called a key. Um, and it's what we would then use with inside our Flutterflow application. We would say, well, actually, I want to know the author's name, or I would like to know the title, or the I'd like to know uh, what the views are. So what we can actually do is we can actually quite simply in Flutterflow query um, for what the, say, the views are, and it will return me back the numbers there, as you can see on number five. So it's really, really simple to understand, and, and we'll, we'll walk through that really slowly as we build up our application. 
application, you're going to see how we're going to be able to interact with the response that's come back from our API. So there you have it. I thought I'll just cover some of those basic details with you in this particular video because I think it's important that we actually understand a little bit about APIs and the data that we're going to actually going to be playing with with inside our application. Of course, we're going to set up all of these APIs with inside the application. So don't worry about that right now. I'm going to provide um, some, some documents that you can actually query just while we're building some of the screens. But of course, we're going to be able to switch that out then to the live API. And the API that we're going to connect to is, is freely available um, it does have some limitations in terms of the number of queries that you can actually make but um, it's it's a great way of us being able to demonstrate the concepts of building this application and using the API of course you can take those skills into your own application and you could be querying all kinds of APIs so um, without further ado um, let's move into the next video where we're going to start building the application of course if you really are enjoying this series please do subscribe to my channel please 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 do like this video because it kind of kicks in with the YouTube algorithm and then more and more people can get to see the content. So let's get cracking and let's start build our application in Flutterflow.